I'm Jack Fletney and I'm attempting to beat the 24-hour chin-up world record by completing 5,500 chin-ups. Chin-ups for 24 hours is completely mad. To say that about him is pretty fearless. This is going to be bigger than I've ever done before and tougher. Well, the, the idea for this chin-up world record started I've done loads of bits before challenges, but they've all been stuff I really like, and they've been stuff I'm quite good at, which is usually cardio-based. I'm doing this for Saints Foundation and supporting these children. A lot of these kids, they don't feel like, well, they feel like the odds are against them. They feel like they can't really achieve anything. And the odds were against me with this one. I want to do something that's going to really challenge me and actually where the likelihood of me failing this is really, really high. I've got long arms, I'm heavy. I was like, this is, I'm not really very good at chin-ups. So I thought, well, Let's give the 24-hour record an attempt. So I've raised money for lots of different charities in the past, whether it be charities supporting elderly, ill children. And the one thing that I feel emotionally connected with is seeing children that maybe haven't had either the best kickstart or the start in life. For me personally, that's where we make the biggest influence in life, is actually by uh, influencing the youth to hopefully make cultural changes. We, we were walking this afternoon, we were walking the Saints, and we, I was chatting to one of the lads there, and he was chatting about being in a gang to me when we're walking back to the club and going, yeah, well, I'm in a gang in Northampton and I can't go to Wellingborough or into Northampton Town Centre because I'll get stabbed. When I was probably a little bit younger than you guys, I had some pretty bad learning difficulties. So I was really behind at school. I hated exams, wasn't performing very well and had lots of speech issues as well. And then when I was about 10, 11 years old, my mum and dad split up. And since then, I've never seen my dad, but I was very lucky because um, then my stepdad moved into the family. I was tough on him playing rugby and the losing side of things. I mean, from when I was, I hated and I sort of instilled that in him more than anything. I, I was lucky enough to get an opportunity to play down at Wasps and be in their academy, youth academy structure. I was there around some amazing people, some amazing leaders in rugby and aspirational figures that I used to watch on TV. So it was, it was a big thing for me to move down to London and do that about 15 years old. At the end of my contract, I wasn't good enough to continue. Uh, they, you know, I wasn't gonna be offered another contract to continue playing. I already had it in my head there because I was reading your Andy McNabb books. I was uh, interested in special forces and all those things. So, so I was already interested in, in joining the military. I looked at joining the parachute regiment. On the way there, when I got the paperwork, on that walk back, I walked past uh, the Naval Careers Office and saw that famous Royal Marines poster, 99.99% need not apply. And that was it for me, I was hooked. knowing that it's one of the hardest courses in the world to do. And that was his next challenge to go and do that then. I passed out of training and, it, and the crash course for me then was literally heading off and joining a unit and going away straight away, whether it be out on boats through the Mediterranean and around the Middle East, and then, uh, yeah, going deploying all over the place of some fantastic places, and obviously to war zones as well, yeah. We went to Afghanistan, that wasn't so good. That was really hard because you go down beforehand and they tell you all these bad things. Coming back from tours, I often felt like I wasn't able to make a real difference. I didn't, not valued, I think I just didn't value my own experience or what I was able to do. So yeah, the, the natural step was, I love fitness, I wanna try and make a difference, let's open a gym. So we're gonna do a quick warm up and we're gonna go into 250 chin-ups for time, so as fast as possible. I did this when I first started training around five months ago and it took me about an hour and 10 minutes. Yeah, the aim is to see if we can half it, if not more. Three. Two, one. halfway through in well under half of the time. So yeah, I'm obviously really proud of Jack. The stuff he does is just insane. He always helps me out when I need help. I love having Jack as a brother and I wouldn't change him for the world. Awesome. Now we're pushing. Last two now. <laughs> I've been training so hard for this one, more than I've done for any other challenge, just because um, this is, this is going to be bigger than I've ever done before and tougher. It's like 40,000 now, I think I've done just over 40,000 over the last few months. So Yeah, when I first started doing these chin-ups, um, it was waking me in the night because I was so sore. So if I'd lay down on a lat, it would wake me up and I'd wake up and be sore from it. And my elbows and wrists were really sore, my shoulders were painful. Especially to begin with, I couldn't straighten my arms 
throughout the throughout a lot of the time after the, like the day after two days after but then over weeks of fighting through that eventually then yeah I, I was able to sort of just get used to it it'll always push through the pain and everything else but you know that inside is really hurting so i don't actually like seeing any of those things in a weird way suffering's good for the soul it's good for you a little bit and i think it, it makes you feel a bit more alive to have those moments so i enjoy that and i look for that i look to be pushed more and more to limits that i'm gonna basically break or give up or or just lose my head he's never happy unless he's been pushed or challenged when we get there and he does it He'll, he'll push on as much as he can, but you know he's not satisfied then. It'll be a tick in a box. I would think almost the next day it'll be forgotten and then he'll be thinking of what he can do. It's actually a problem I've got to personally sort out anyway, because actually in, inherently it won't make me happy because I'll always be chasing something that's not there. And it's something that I'm working on now. I realised it actually after I did that Ironman event, you know, a lot of people do them and they live on, live on that and it's not a bad thing that's an incredible achievement but I remember I finished it and I literally the next day I flew back and went back to work and I just forgot about it and I just didn't think I'd done anything decent I just completely undervalued it and I remember there I was like this is maybe a problem you need to have a look at this and sort this out and it's something I'm personally working on that actually to hopefully make me feel happier and maybe more fulfilled because actually that's sort of what I'm chasing now personally and um, that fulfillment which I think I'm getting from the charitable side, but also from the, from the personal side of taking on these challenges. Helping people like you find what your passion is and like succeed and go and do some amazing things, which all of you have the chance to do, because I was in a similar position sat where you were. How come you're down here at the foundation then? What, what's been going on? It's all about you know, everybody else, who he can help. It's infectious, the, you know, this kind of passion that he has to help. I sometimes worry that Jack thinks more, doesn't think enough about himself. He's incredible to work with. He's pushing all of us out of our comfort zones in trying to um, raise £100,000. About 300 metres that way is the foundation building where the charity is set up. They support these kids. And that is also where we're going to be looking to build this brand new hub. Being here now, the pressure is slowly increasing. And as I start to think about four weeks to go, that it's all starting to become real. The impatient part of me wants to just get on there now and start but I am really looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to seeing it all come together with, with, with hopefully this huge opportunity now to raise a really large amount of money and support such a fantastic cause. So yeah, I cannot wait to literally get on that bar and start doing chin-ups. <laughs>